All right, besties, here are eight things that I enjoyed reading this week. Coming in number one, we have Scythe by Neil Shusterman. Now, this is the first book in the Ark of a Scythe trilogy. For those who don't know, this book series is about a world where there is no more disease, where all world wars have ceased, and where people can basically live as long as they want. Because of this, there are scythes that travel the world, deciding who gets to live and who doesn't. Two teens are tasked with training to become future scythes in this very fascinating speculative utopia. I guess this would be dystopian? I don't know. The world is a utopia, but what's a utopia with a fatal flaw? That's just a dystopia, right? Somebody smart and help me. Coming in at number two is the Xenogenesis Trilogy, aka Lilith's Brood by Octavia E. Butler. Now, I'm currently on the first book in this trilogy called Dawn. Dawn is absolutely an immersive, fascinating world. If you like aliens, you're going to love this book. I, like, didn't know what to expect going into this. I mean, I feel like each work by Octavia E. Butler is so singular and different. But this book has swept me away. I can't stop thinking about it, and I just... I, like, don't even know how to describe it. You have to read it. Coming in at number three is The Body Is Not an Apology by Sonia Renee Taylor. Which it's an awesome, awesome, awesome meditation on just how to love yourself. Radical self-love. It is amazing. Coming in at number four is Reimagining by Ayanda Stood. If you follow Ayanda Stood here on TikTok, you know that she posts really fascinating things about coloniality, decolonial thinking, philosophy, art, self-love, self-acceptance. And this newsletter is just really the highlight of my week. I love it so much. Coming in at number five, Five on the list is Mind Hacking by Sir John Hargrave. This is a book for like the geeks out there who just love hearing like a computer programming nerd really talk about like what the 80s and 90s were like in the computer programming world. And I feel like he actually has some really insightful things to say about depression and like how to just be a better advocate for yourself. Whenever I think of mind hacking, I think of the singularity and I think of Ray Kurzweil. And here's a picture of me when I met Ray Kurzweil. Science Saddy. Coming in at number six is how much more Netflix can the world absorb? If you've ever wondered, like, who makes the green lighting decisions of what shows get made and what shows don't, like, this article literally just lays it all out for you. I was especially interested at, like, how over the course of a hike, there was, like, this K-drama that completely changed its, like, whole plot for a season just because of conversation that was had. I was like, the power that this woman has. Okay, coming in at number seven, Florence Pugh's Radical Self-Acceptance by Chloe Shama. This was a really interesting celebrity profile. I love celebrity profiles because I just love celebrities and pop culture, but I felt like this was a really interesting like, and thoughtful examination about her life, her, her origins, and kind of just like the actress that she hopes to become and that already is becoming. I also love those day in life pieces where you kind of like walk along with the person through their life in New York. Like, I just think it's interesting. I'm out of time, but this piece about is campus free speech really dead is so good. And read The Coddling of the American Mind and Excellent Cheap. Oh my gosh, I gotta go. It's Sandy. Bye.